Thank you so much for staying with us. It is still iBrand Daybreak. Uh, last week, we started off a, com a conversation with uh, these gentlemen uh, talking about the Arise agenda and, of course, the new cabinet of uh, His Excellency Governor uh, uh, of Aquaibom State. And he, Thompson is here with us this morning to come further that conversation. Hi, Thompson. Good morning. Good morning. All right, so last week you mentioned that we were looking forward to appointments and formation of the cabinet. I'm sure that has happened by now. Uh, sincerely, it's nice to have us to talk about the Arise Agenda of His Excellency Governor Omoyeno of Akwaibom State. He is the Golden Era Governor, and uh, he's a talk and do governor. That is what we have you know, be, begin to see in the appointment that has been made so far. Mm. Uh, you know, we talk about the appointment of the secretary to the state government, the chief press secretary, the chief pro protocol officer, the economic advisor, and uh, the essay on publicity. And these are all people that have, you know, showed themselves, you know, uh, to be, you know, competent visible in the context of development in Aquaibom State and this give them the opportunity to be appointed into these various offices for them to continue to you know work for the good of Aquaibom State. Oh. Now we've also had appointments that ranges from senior special assistance to the governor on uh, website Dr. Frank Ekboyong. We also have uh, appointment into uh, spe uh, senior special assistance to the governor on uh, the record and documentation honorable doing so ACN. we also have an appointment into the website and uh, and streaming in the person of uh, honorable uh, uh, solomon Ayo and also morgan ekanem which are very, very useful uh, individuals. Even in the last government, they play a major role in making sure that the governance of His Excellency, former governor, Odomi Manuel, went successful. Mm -hmm. So, and the governor in his, uh, you know, several uh, occasions has mentioned that he's going to appoint both the new faces and the, you know, the, and old faces that were in government. He's going to bring in you know, old faces to mix up with the new faces so that they can interwine and then, uh, you know, save the state. So the appointment so far has been a, you know, a, a, a good one. All right. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. The governor, the current, the incumbent governor of um, Akwaibom State, no doubt is trying to implement issues that have to do with inclusion when it comes to government um, appointment. But you are aware that in Nigeria, as we have it today, it's a government of I rub your back and you rub my back. Are we likely to see that playing out in his appointment, especially not putting the round peg in the round hole? Are we likely to see that happening in his appointment? Talk the issue of that. inclusiveness, you know, I think uh, if there is one person or one governor in Nigeria that has taken the issue of inclusiveness very serious is... His Excellency Pastor Why do you say so? You, you can, uh, the appointment as uh, the Chief uh, uh, Photography Officer is, is a lady. Talk to us about her expertise. Yeah, I, I think uh, she's been on ground. Uh, she's uh, Adi Akman and uh, she has been around for the past uh, government and uh, have been doing a lot of uh, photography work for, you know, His Excellency the Mr. Udomi Manuel, and all the beautiful shots that we've seen around, you know, on the internet and uh, in several publications is being carried out by this, you know, lady. And she's been a very hardworking lady so far. And all the places on the video streaming and so on has been carried out by her. So she's been very, very useful and competent, you know, so far, as long as I know. And then when you also talk about inclusiveness, the executive governor just met, uh, you know, student with disability, you know, you just uh, like a uh, couple of days ago. You know, that's the first of its kind. That is, third week in office, he decided to meet this set of people. 
and has also set up a, a scholarship grant for these students to study, hmm. you know, in the higher institutions. You understand? And that goes a long way to show that even in the appointments, we also advocate that His Excellency would do well to appoint people of disability into his government and also set up a platform where they can also, you know, be integrated as part of the society. That's, that was actually my next question because, yes, some governors can be empathetic, especially trying to, you know, include these persons who have been totally excluded from society, integrate them into the system by giving them scholarship program and all of that. My question I was going to ask you, but you've addressed it anyway, that are we likely to see at least two or three percentage of these persons of special needs come into his government and be part of the governance system. Are we likely to see that happening in any time soon? Yeah, in his wisdom, I, I believe, you know, I'm not going to preempt mm. his uh, appointment or his activities or his emotions or his empathy or, you know, towards uh, various uh, set of people. But I can assure you with what he has started so far, you know, I, I once said the governor, when he has Zoom office, also went to the high and mighty in the society to pay them a courtesy visit, you know. And then you also see him going to also the, you know, the downtrodden, visiting the downtrodden and, you know, bringing them together to make sure that, that he's a governor for all. He's not just a latest kind of, you know, governor that is bringing governance that is going to be inclusive. So you cannot, you know, you cannot overemphasize the fact that it's going to carry all set of people in the society, you know, along because he's looking after the success of the whole uh, governance at the state level. All right, uh, let, let's talk about this. Uh, last week when we started this conversation, the issue of tourism came up, but for want of time, we weren't able to you know, really delve into it. And, you know, we mentioned how that uh, before now, Kwaibom used to be a beauty to behold. And for some reasons, it's not up to par like he used to. But you have happened to have a lot of stuff to say about the tourism and the plans of the current gov uh, governor and his government towards that sector. Yeah, I, I had uh, understand the fact that the governor during the campaign has made several promises as per tourism development in the state. And, uh, you know, the potential of tourism in Aquaibom State still remain on tap. If, if I can bring to your notice that we have the amalgamation, uh, you know, center where Nigerian states with the Northern Protectorate were amalgamated in Ikarabasi, we still have that center lying far. Nothing is done. No development, and that's a very good tourism, you know, uh, development side. That if the government focus attention on it, would drive, you know, tourists from all around the country and outside the country into Aquaibo. We also knew about the Mary Slazer uh, tomb where she was buried. You, you remember the the woman that ended this uh, killing of twins. That is also, you know there in Aquaibom State. And these are great histori historical, uh, you know, uh, events. Yes. Uh, uh, point that one can, you know, derive a lot of uh, delight to visit. So, this place is still there. We have the Ibn Beach. It's still there. We have some other, you know, the Green River. Have you heard of Green River and the Blue River? We have the Green River in uh, Okanafo. We have the Blue River somewhere in uh, Israel Thai. You know, these are all, you know, sites that will give, you know, interesting view from many of the tourists, wherever they come from. And then, the, I believe the governor is also interested in making the city a smart city, such that with the development of the seaport, we have the airport now, and then uh, we, we, we're going to have a, a smart city where uh, you know, uh, digitally everything in a city will be connected. If that is the wish of the governor, he can do that. And we advocate that can be possible because he is the talk and do kind of person. So if he handles the resources together and then bringing the, the, the investors from U.S. or wherever, 
that are vested or bringing some we have the e-library you know that can be turned into you know uh, revenue revenue generation uh, 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 environment and then you also talk about generation of employment for teaming youth all right now as you have said earlier on you know tourism is part of his area of focus as a new government that is coming in place talk to us in a very practical sense what steps is the governor putting in place to turn that particular sectors all those areas you just mentioned that are tourist attraction centers talk to us about what practical steps is the governor taking to turn around the economy of that state into a tourist location because for the most part we have countries who use tourism as their mainstay for instance dubai it's an oil rich country but then tourism is on the top list so how can your governor be able to make aquaibum state a tourist attraction center not just taxing the you know the, the citizens of that state but making sure that revenues are generated from these areas i think uh, you need to also understand that every gov government that comes in have their plans you know so the the only thing we can do as an advocacy group is to encourage the governor pastor Moino, to be courageous ever to implement whatsoever tourism plans he has on ground because we are not going to speak for him what to do he knows he's been in the you know hospitality business for more, over 20 years so he understands what tourism is all about and he knows the areas that they can bring in you know uh, foreign partners you know to liaise with the state government and then sought for some approval from the you know federal government to grant because in bringing about that kind of uh, you know tourism uh, attraction it, there are some you know approval documentation that will go through the federal government so and that is why i'm so happy that the state governor has begun very well by you know making sure that they shun all politics of uh, divide to embrace politics of you know inclusiveness visiting the the senate president that the you know very very remarkable experience and then also have also visited the the the, the president of the country ahmed uh, tinimbu and in all these visits is to make sure that he drive quality governance to the state, to the benefit of a quite state. So if in his wisdom he brings about all the stakeholders in the tourism industry within and outside the country, I think they will be able to put up some, you know, tourism uh, uh, infrastructures that will attract foreign direct investment, you know, to that sector. Because I know it booms, A is already there. And is ready to uh, lift over, you know, 200,000, you know, uh, tourists into the state whenever a, a project of that magnitude is being implemented. You know, there are projects that can drive, you know, as much as, you know, huge amounts of money into the state. And uh, we talk about the e-library. E-library, if, if it can be, you know, uh, it, it can be transformed into you know a, a, an opportunity where you know uh, some philippines or some people from uh, singapore you know have been invited to come in you know run the place in a manner that you know will you know they will begin to produce some gadgets in that place and then also provide some you know uh, spaces for indigenous people you know to also create one or two things in the ict industry I think it will really bring in a lot of, uh, you know, attraction and that will improve the tourism, you know, situation of the state. All right. Now, let's go because I appreciate the fact that you said he visited the um, um, Gospel Aquabio, perhaps, you know, maybe for the fact that he might want to create a synergy as a legislature and um, the executive. Now, let's talk about... Um, the issue of environmental degradation and of course waste management in Aquaibum State. What plans does he have on ground 
to be able to make sure that waste management is tackled and of course environmental degradation yeah i think uh, if, if you can see what the former government did in terms of uh, you know environmental management and uh, erosion control you see aquabon has one of the uh, hybrid deep uh, suction system of uh, in flood elation control you know where it spans some mid kilometers you know so they have a central unit and what the governor needs to do is to you know uh, improve on that what has already been on ground and then uh, make sure there are drainages and then uh, provide some uh, uh, you know incentive for for waste management agencies or private waste man management uh, participant that wants to come in and you know you evacuate some waste in some major streets you know because we be having some issue of uh, flooding in some major street around Uyo and the vicinity so if uh, proper channels have been built drainages and then uh, open up the sector for instance, I've had a situation where uh, a private individual had to go with some form of, uh, you know, uh, trucking kind of, you know, a mini truck to evacuate waste wherever they are, even in the rural areas, you know. And then uh, you talk about the recycling, you know, from waste to wealth, creating, making, you know, the waste management an opportunity for people to create wealth. I think that is the angle that the governor is looking at. And I know if, with the implementation of the strategy that they have on the environmental management, that will bring about that uh, attainment of results. I would, oh, yeah. Yeah, go ahead. Are we likely to see job creation in that sector, especially when it comes to processing of this waste to wealth? We can see what is happening in Lagos, for instance, the waste uh, recycling, you know, what the, the citizen, you know, that's why we call for citizen participation. You know, the role of citizens should be to, to keep themselves abreast with the, you know, policies of the government and get to know how they can come in. In fact, the governor has already, you know, bringing Bank of Industry into the state with provision of, a, you know, accumulation for the Bank of Industry in the smart 21-story building. So that is how far the governor has gone, you know, to make sure that the private sector individuals that want to participate, participate into governance will have access to loans, you know, to buy their facilities, provide equipment, and then, you know, participate in the governance of the state. You know, and this is going to go a long way to create, you know, a lot of jobs, directly and indirectly. All right, uh, quickly, talk to us about the agricultural development. Uh, this was this also informed part of the conversations that we were having before now. What's the plan towards the sector of agriculture? Yeah, I, I, I can, you know, boldly say that the governor has, in several occasions during the campaign, has said that he's going to establish some farm settlements. But, you know, most importantly, you know, gov 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 uh, gov governance or the job of government is not to provide, to run businesses, but to provide enabling environment for business to, you know, grow and succeed. So I think uh, the governor is really working hard and uh, for sure he is going to provide, you know, uh, those incentives that will make, you know, private sector driven uh, economy to come to bear by providing that's i just mentioned the bank of industries you know the the farmers will have access to loans you know to cultivate in subsistence farm you know when they produce enough for themselves you know they will also produce what they can also export or sell to others so we are seeing a situation where the state will, be, will become, you know, number one food basket of the nation. And for the other side, well, especially the West African coast. So we are going to experience that with the, you know, seriousness of the executive governor, Pastor Moino, 
So I have no doubt the agricultural sector will be, you know, seriously dealt with in such a manner that it will be beneficial to all. Farmers who have access to loans, because that is the most important thing. You know, when, when you cultivate the sub, sub, substantive, you know, enough, enough uh, farming uh, uh, space of land, and then enough crops, and a, enough uh, availability, ability of equipment, then you begin to see, you know, production that will be able to take care of the acquiring people and then the outside world. Loans are important to farmers, but let us also bring the issue of security uh, to it. Uh, we've seen situations in the past where farmers are not able to access their land because of uh, the myriads of insecurity issues that we've experienced in the country in the past. Uh, people get uh, dis, uh, uh, dislodged from their farms. They cannot visit. And that is my question to you this morning is where is the place of security in all this conversation? Because you bring in industries from the Western world, you bring in individuals from these places to help build and arrange what you have in mind. But if there is no security, then there might be a very big problem. Talk to us about the security situation. Uh, as a matter of fact, the number one goal of every government is for security of lives and property of its citizenry. And that, Pastor Omoyna, we know for sure, would take that as a very, very critical area of his governance. And when I talk about the, the smart city, that is what the smart city is all about. If the smart city strategy can be implemented, you see a situation where, you know, Aquibo State will be able to own a satellite. You know, if they are able to collaborate with uh, you know, America or Europe where such a facility can be provided, and then they, they can be a satellite that can cover and provide communication across the Gulf of Guinea that will be beneficial to all the, the, the countries along that coast and even for Nigeria, that will control oil theft, you know, because Nigeria loses a lot of money to, you know, those uh, guys in the sea. You call them a uh, pirate. Uh, pirate, you know. <clears throat> so Aquabum stand is located in a very critical area that can provide, you know, surveillance for all those area, including Hesmen, you know, wherever. It, and, Aside the technological, you know, approach toward maintaining, you know, security and law and order, we also see where, you know, the governor has been, you know, proactive, the way he relates with all stakeholders in the society, you know, people that, you know, are running various uh, uh, institutions, and then you also see. The people that are, you know, like the headsmen are being, people own those uh, heads that goes to the farm to destroy. But the governor is making sure he closes ranks with all these stakeholders, all these people, you know, interpreting the Arise Agenda policy for everyone so that they can understand that with maintenance of law and order and security, there will be serious and massive drive of foreign direct investment because no investor wants to come into any area that does not have peace. You know, peace is a panacea for development and that Pastor Moino understands and that is what is a man of peace and that is what is implementing, carrying everyone along, making sure that everyone play their role to the maintenance of security and then providing jobs because the area of uh, Security has to do with, you know, not necessarily carrying of arms, but making sure that you give the, the needful, you know, uh, opportunities for your working class citizen to be, you know, fully engaged. Thereby, they wouldn't have time to go and, you know, partake in some vices that, you know, would be de detrimental to the growth of the state. So, in doing all this, we will find out that there will be peace in the land and, you know, there will be development across board. 
Okay, so when you talk about installing satellites, especially to man that particular state, there's no doubt that you're going to need the backing of the federal government. So now talk to us about his visit to um, Goswil Akbabi, who is the Senate president. Is there any synergy with him and the governor in making sure that, <clears throat> excuse me, whatever bill that the state passes through the legislature, it would get to the president for ascension? Yeah, I, I think uh, during the visit, His Excellency did, uh, you know, I, I watched it on telly. I saw his uh, press briefing narrating all uh, the excess of his visit to the president and the excess of the visit he made to the uh, Senate president. So I think he's on that, he's in line with his, you know, his uh, philosophy, you know, to make sure that the federal and the state collaborate in development of every sector of the economy. And, uh, you know, a quiet state, as I said, cannot be on, cannot operate on uh, isolation. It has to also work together with the federal government to see that development is brought to the people. So the visit, I believe, will really mater materialize in due time. And uh, I believe the, the federal government and the, you know, the Senate president as well will be able to see the need, you know, to collaborate with the state to bring about development because we are all Nigerians and the territory is Nigerian territory. So development in Aquabum State, you know, is going to be a plus to the economy of Nigeria. So that is the way I want the Nigerian state to look at, you know, Aquabum State because Aquabum State is an emerging economy. And we are looking at, you know, doubling up that of the economy of the state of California. So, and we are working at that pace. With time, we will get there. So Nigerian state has the right to make sure that they needed approval, documentation. They need the cooperation they need to give to Aquabum. They do that for the good of the people. Politics right. aside. Mm, thank you so much for dropping by the studio today. Uh, quite an exhaustive conversation we've had. But I'm hoping that we, you know, we'll keep uh, butchers in these points as they unfold. But it's been an amazing time. Thank you for your time. We really appreciate it. Thank you very much. It is still iBrand Daybreak. When we come back from these quick timeouts, we will continue these conversations. Don't go anywhere. Stay with us.